Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. On Tuesday for my Facebook Live, I made these really easy cards using a very, very simple torn paper technique. Um, I'd seen it quite a lot on Pinterest and some of the Stamping Up pages and I thought I'd have a go and it's actually really, really easy. So the basic cards that I made on Tuesday, they show designer series paper underneath. Here I've stamped an image and I used a, um, the blender pen just to colour a little bit of the ink. And this one, I used designer series paper as the torn paper for rolling back. And I stamped on a, on a piece of basic white underneath. And I wanted to step it up just a little bit and make a different card. So today's card is the same technique, but I'm going to do some sponging and I'm going to do some stamping and punching. And I'm using this set, the Let's Set Sail set. Oh, that's really tricky to say. Let's Set Sail set. Uh, and the matching punch that goes with it. So I've got all of my pieces all pre-cut and if you hop on over to my blog, use the link that's on the YouTube video and it'll take you straight to the page with all the sizes and everything. I will try to say the sizes as I go along, um, just the little measurements that I've used, but if I miss anything, it's on my blog. So I've got for my base Knight of Navy and it's cut at eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter and it's just going to make a very simple base. If you wanted to cut your card lengthways instead that would work as well. So I've cut two pieces of balmy blue and two pieces of basic white. The balmy blue is five and a quarter by four the basic white is five by three and three quarters. So each piece of card goes down in measurements a quarter of an inch each time. And I'm just going to attach some of these ready. So this is going to be the inside. I'm not going to stamp an image on there, but you certainly could. And I'm going to pop it inside so that that little job is finished. It really is an easy technique and I was a bit worried when I tried it on Tuesday that people wouldn't, um, wouldn't like it or thought it might be too easy for them but actually I got such lovely comments that I thought I would do a little stepped up version. Okay, now I'm going to pop this piece on as well. You can wait till the end to put this one on if you want. But while I'm already gluing and sticking, I might as well just pop it on. Okay. Now this piece, which is the same size as the piece here, this is going to become our torn paper piece. Okay. So on my cards on Tuesday, I rolled them all that way. But this time I'm going to roll it the other way. So I'm just going to pop that on one side and I want to do some sponging so I need a little piece of scrap and my sponged element is going to go sort of through the middle here. This is going to roll back and I'm going to sponge through here. So I've got a slightly smaller piece. This is four and three quarters by three and a quarter but you might have to adjust the size as you go along depending on you know, where your pattern is and everything and how, how wide you do your tearing. So this is my piece that I'm going to sponge for inside. And I've got just three simple colors. I've got a balmy blue, daffodil delight and pumpkin pie. And I'm going to make sort of a watery scene with a little bit of sea or ocean at the bottom. And I'm going to start with the ocean. Let me just move those out of the way a bit. So I've got my balmy blue and I'm just going to use my little blending brush. Now, if you prefer to use um, sponge daubers or sponges, this works exactly the same. So I'm gonna go across the whole of the bottom and I'm not going to put much ink on at a time. I don't want it to be you know, stripy or um, lots of different colors. So 
so I'm only putting a little bit on. And I don't really know where my paper is going to be torn, so I'm just doing the bottom third. I want some bits a little bit darker, so I'm just going to go like this. I know that I'm not going to see this very bottom, but I don't know where I'm going to see the rest. And we can always go back and add a little bit more if we need to. Let's pop that one down. Next, I'm going to go with the Daffodil Delight, and that's going to be just meeting the blue of the water. Again, I'm just going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to put some on my spun on my blender, rub it round a little bit. I'm going to turn it round, and I want to go for this white space here, but I also want to mingle it with this blue. So a little bit of it will mingle. I don't want it to be you know, like a straight line going across. I don't want it to look like the horizon line. Oh, that was a bit bright, but that's okay. We'll sort of blend that out as we go along. See, that's what happens if you don't remember to rub some of the ink off already, but that's okay. And I'm making sure to colour the edges as well, because this edge you will see. And you don't want it to have, you know, like a, a white line across. Okay. I'm going to use my same blender brush for the orange, because this one I used for yellows and oranges. So I'm just making sure I've rubbed off the majority of the ink from the yellow. And I'm going to go with pumpkin pie. This would look really pretty in like turquoises and purples. You could use any colours for your sunset. Okay, I just this is quite a dark colour, so I'm rubbing quite a bit off. Okay, and I'm going to start with that where I had it too dark, really. And can you see as I start and go over and blend over with a darker colour, it tones it down just a bit. And remember, we're not going to see this very top piece, so you don't have to have everything just perfect. I would like some little bit brighter pumpkin pie, though. I'm going to go over this bit a bit more as well. There we go. And it might not look much at the moment, but once you get the card with the little torn elements and you just see a portion of that, it will look really nice. Okay, now I'm going to go across with a little bit more of the blue. Just because, can you see, I've got sort of a whitish part on it and I don't want it to look too white. So I'm going to get my balmy blue back again. And just go up a little bit to meet that yellow. There we go. And you can play with this blending and colouring and just make it exactly how you want. You could even add a deeper blue in there as well. It's just fun to play. There's really no right or wrong. It's just whatever you like and however you want your little scene to be. I think this would be pretty with the palm trees as well. You know the little palm tree set that we have and the black dyes? Uh, the dyes, if you cut them in black, I think that would look quite nice. Okay, so this is our base. While we're here, I'm going to stamp some little birds. I want some birds on the front and I want a few just about, just past the middle over here. So I've got the birds out of the set there's this little one here, and just with my black memento, you might not see them. We won't know until we tear the paper. So I'm going to pop, make sure that I've got one sort of in the yellowy area. And I'm going to put one over here as well. My paper roll is going to go from the right to the left this time. So I'm going to put my birds over here towards the left. As I say, I don't know where the paper's going to end, but I know that we'll be able to see those little birds. Okay. Now, let's see what's next. I might as well do the rest of my stamping. 
I want to use a small sentiment for this and these ones are too big for me. So I went back to the set that I was using on Tuesday and I've just stamped this one, the Just A Note. And I've used Knight of Navy when I see where I've hidden it. Ah, here it is. I've used Knight of Navy just because that's the same colour as my base. And I've already popped the sentiment on a block. You don't need very much um, card at all. It really is just a scrap. Now, to cut that out, I used a die from another set and I got out the Fabulous Frame dies. I haven't used these very much at all yet. I did use this one um, on one of my cards a couple of weeks ago, but then I saw this little one. It's almost like a library tag, isn't it? You know the um, old-fashioned library tags and then you would have these on the little drawers with all the library cards in? Maybe I'm showing my age there, but that's that kind of shape. Now, it's a very tight fit on here. It doesn't really fit. But when you put it on, you need to put it so that you cover a little bit of the J and a little bit of the E, and you have it sort of centered between those, those letters in that space. I have already pre-prepped this one. And when it comes out, it will look just like this. Now, the purists among us all would say, oh, you know, it, it's, not, it's not big enough because you've got this little indentation. I actually quite like that. So I'm happy with that. If I wasn't happy, you could just use um, uh, just one of the stitch rectangles, one of the other sentiment dies that we've got, one of your pick-a-punch uh, label makers, anything. But that's just what I wanted. It looked sort of nautical to me and I quite liked it. Okay, so I'm going to do my tearing. I want to leave about an inch at the top and the same at the bottom. So I, I never know quite how it's going to tear. It tears differently every time, even though you do it the same, uh, and that's fine. So I'm going to start here and you just start off the tear and pull this center piece towards you. If you pull it this way, can you see how you get that torn paper on the underneath? If you pull this strip, your torn paper would be on top of that and it doesn't look quite the same. So I'm just gonna go down to here and then at this side, I'm gonna do just the same. And I'm gonna make sure that I pull this middle piece up towards me. I'm not trying to keep it in a straight line. I'm not worried about that at all. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to about there. I can always move it along a little bit more later. This piece is too long. You need to chop some off, otherwise it makes the card too bulky. Let's pop that over there. What you need is like a little paintbrush or um, a skewer, or I've got a little makeup brush, uh, a pencil, anything just to make the curled piece. So pop that down and you're going to roll this over. Roll it as far as you've torn, okay? I quite like this bit sticking out, so don't think, oh, I need to go back and re-roll it. It looks quite nice, actually. Okay, so let's pop that out of the way. Okay, so you've got that nice curve on there. And I'm going to get my glue, and I'm just going to put some glue in here and roll it. Now you can roll it just a little bit tighter. Um, now, I need a little bit more glue here. I don't like to put too much down to start with because it will, as you push this roll along, it'll be like a, a tube of toothpaste. It'll push the contents along. So, And I don't want too much of that glue pushing along. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold this for a second or two. Let me get my little glue eraser. I don't know if that's a little bit of glue I've got on there or a little piece of fluff. Let's try and get this with one hand. Oh, I think it's a little bit of glue. I'll have to wait till this just finishes drying. Okay. Okay. Now, 
If you didn't have liquid glue, if you only are a tape person, you could tape this. You could even stick little um, glue dots underneath to make it go all the way along. Let me erase this glue here. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm looking at this and thinking I've got a nice little piece here. Let me pop that on here. I'm quite happy with having that much space. If you wanted a bit more, you could roll a little bit and it tears a bit more. And you just keep going as far as you want. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit more glue there now, just because I've moved it. Okay, let's hold that. And then the next thing, while I'm holding this to glue, the next thing to do is to decide which part of your sponged image you want to show. You must have these edges lining up. See how you can sort of change the scene a little bit. If you only want two little birds, if you want more. I'm just going to move mine slightly so that I can see them like that. Okay. I need you to glue a little piece of paper. Tear it a tiny bit more. There we go. Okay, I'm going to pop that on one side just to dry. I'm going to make the inside piece while that's drying. Okay. Now, to make my stamped image, I'm actually going to make this whole little sailing boat. And let's move that out of the way. Because I can punch out the shape, I need to know whereabouts on my paper to have these sails. I don't want to punch them out one at a time. So the best way to do that is to give yourself a little template. So you just punch it out once. I'm punching an early espresso because I actually want my um, my boat and the um, like the mainsail frame here. I actually want that in the brown. So okay. now this piece you use as your template ready for stamping. I'm going to pop that on one side. And I don't want these pieces because I'm going to stamp them. So what you do next is, I'll just take my stamps off so you can see how I lined them up. Pop this onto a scrap piece that you're going to stamp on. And then making sure that you've got the bottom of the stamp facing down, just pop those in the little piece that you've stamped out or punched out. Okay. They will stay in there. They'll stick down for just as long as you need them. Okay? okay. So that's what you need to do. Okay. And then you can take this off. Let me do it. You can take this off, but first you need to put it on a block. Sorry. So I'm popping it back in. Okay. There we go. That's it's a bit straighter as well. There we go. Pop your block on top, squash it on so that your two stamps have stuck. Take it off and that will give you the perfect lining up for how you punch. I'm going to stamp it in Knight of Navy, but you could use you know, a darker colour, a contrast colour, anything you wanted. And this image when you look, it's meant to look sort of worn. The first time I punched it, um, stamped it and punched it, I thought, oh, I haven't got enough ink on, but it's meant to look like that. Okay. I'm just gonna turn it around and just stamp it down. And I don't need to worry about where that's all lined up. The only thing I might have to do is trim it a little bit. Because as you put this into the punch, this edge, because it's a curved shape, this edge is going to get in my way. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off. I'm going to trim a little bit at the bottom as well, just to make it easier to get in there. And then all you do is line it up where the image will be punched out. And what I do is I put it in and I close this just a little with my thumb. Not enough for it to trap the paper and not enough for it to cut, but just a little bit so that once you've got it lined up a, a bit, you can sort of 
easily move your paper just a fraction if you need to. Okay, and then because you've already got it half closed, just finish. And then you only need the two little sails. We don't need this piece. That's just an easy way to get that to go. Okay, now this is not stuck. Oh, yes, it is. Sorry, I thought it hadn't stuck down, but it has. Okay, let's find our little image that we're going to put over. And I'm going to put tape on. I might just put my silicon mat underneath. And I might get glue on the back. So, um, right, let's put this right up to the corner. Right to the corner here. It can be a little bit bumpy to put your tape on just because you've got that rolled element. But you can do it. Now remember this time I've got my um, torn paper going that way. So I'm lining up at this side. As long as I've got these bits lined up and as much of the image of the bird showing as I want, I'm happy. But there will be some of the um, adhesive still on the back that you can feel. And that's why I put my um, little silicone mat down. Okay, I'm just going to add some glue here. Ready for it to go on the front. Let's get that base back again. I'm going to have this right in the middle. And because it's liquid glue, I can move it round just a tiny bit. If you didn't want to do a sentiment um, and cut it out, you could put your sentiment straight onto the front here. I think I'm going to have to put a glue dot under there, you know, just because I've got a little bit more bulk under there. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Now, my little sentiment, I'm just going to put on here with dimensionals but you could certainly stamp directly to the card. Pop a little bit of adhesive on here. And then I'm going to try and put it just under. Let me hold this with my tweezers. I'm just going to try and pop it under here a little bit. Or have I glued it too well down? Oh, no, I can just lift it a tiny bit. I'm going to use dimensionals on my sails. Let's use some of these little pieces up. See if that will fit on there. Might be just the right length. Let's see. Well, if I just move it round a tiny bit. Now this one goes at this right hand side. And by popping them on back dimensionals, that just gives it a little more of a 3D look. Where's my other one? Oh, here it is. Put one of these scrap pieces on again. Let's turn it that way. And I'm going to put just an extra little piece there. Let's see if we've got a, a small piece that I could put on. I don't want very much. That might be a little bit wide. Yeah, I'm just going to take a tiny bit of it off. Probably the strips of foam would work better for that. Because they're already cut really thin. Okay, now let's see which way does that go. There we go. Oh, I didn't take the back off. <laughs> but why isn't it sticking? <laughs> because I haven't taken the back off. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay. Now I'm going to pop this on, but I'm going to make two little knots on it. I'm just going to use some of the white twine from the Essentials pack. And I'm going to tie two really, really simple little overhand knots. I'm not threading it through the 
whole um, label. I'm just going to do two little knots. I will trim it down a little bit as well. Uh, I need to have two dimensionals on the back. Now let's put two of the bigger ones on. I'll take these backings off. And all I'm going to do is thread the loop part through this little hole. Oh, my fingers are gluey. Let's see if we can get that threaded through. I know it will thread through because I've already done it once. Through you go. Doesn't want to thread through today though. I'm going to just poke it through with my tweezers. There we go. Oh, nope. Why is it you can tie things off camera? You can make beautiful bows and everything. And once it comes to being on camera, it doesn't want to play. Okay, where's the other piece? Here we go. Right, you are going through this hole. So, there we go. Okay, so you've got the two knots at the front and I'm just gonna put them over the dimensionals. That will keep them stuck down. Then I'm going to just put this down here. Make sure it's glued down on my dimensionals and I'm just going to cut these so that it's only a little tail. Really I should be cutting with my ribbon scissors because these are going to make them fray. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not a bad look, the frayed look. Let's move this round. Okay. There we go. A little bit of glue there. Let's take that off. Okay. And then I'm going to pop on some of these little rustic metallic adhesive dots. Could maybe have done with one right in the middle under here. I might try and pop one under a bit later. I'm just going to pop a couple of these on. Let's get this and I think let's do just one over here. And one up here or two up two from here I don't want it to be too near to those little birds actually so let's see hmm. I'm gonna do two down here and then I'm gonna do just one up here I'm just trying round <laughs> and seeing where I want them. That's the worst thing, isn't it? When when you're not 100% sure where you want them to be, but I'm naturally just going to go over here so that your eye stays over this side. Okay, so here's my stepped up little one just because we've done some sponging and we did some punching and cutting. Let's pop these ones back from Tuesday. And then this is the one that I was making earlier. And can you see that this cardstock this time I embossed? I used the timber embossing folder because I thought it looked a bit sort of watery. And what I did was I stamped my little birds the same as we did here, but before I tore it, I popped it through the embossing folder so that it just made it easier. It was all embossed before you know, I had to try and tear a little piece and then roll it back to emboss it. So I'll move those two and there we go. So I'm going to move that little dot. I'll be doing that off camera, but uh, it's not quite in the place I'd like it. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope you have a super weekend and I'll see you all again really soon. Take care, bye-bye.